Hi, everyone. Welcome again. I'm going to turn uh, the presentation over to Janice Farah from CASAS, Recording Distance Learning Using TOPS Pro Enterprise. Take it away, Janice. Thank you so much. I want to welcome everyone to this webinar today. We're going to go through a few of the overviews that Jay covered in his presentation uh, last Tuesday and last Thursday. And then we're going to dive straight into TOPS Pro Enterprise, which I lovingly call TE as its nickname. You'll see that used throughout the presentation. Uh, next slide, please. Here's a peek at the agenda. We're going to look at three major areas. One is classes, the other is attendance, and the third is students. And this presentation actually came about, I started back in February putting together a presentation for TDLS, that's OTAN's Technology and Distance Learning Symposium. And I had to kind of decide between a PowerPoint and a live demo. And so I was doing a lot of live demoing. And every time I turned around, I would see everyone in the room with their iPhones up, taking pictures and videos of the demo. So it makes more sense to me today to make a presentation for people who like pictures. So there's lots of screenshots in here. I'm not going to dwell on it so much because this is such a big group. What I'll do is I'm not really planning to stop for questions. Um, I'm not going to get into too many of the weeds, but what I'm hoping is that as we get through the slides, I'll be able to address most of the things that are coming up in your mind. Okay, so that's kind of our little bit of housekeeping. I want to say thanks to Jay Wright. I pilfered several of his slides. I stole all of his examples. Next slide, please. And these become sort of the, the foundation for what today's presentation is going to include. I want to say right off the bat, I am not presenting any new policy. This is reiterating what Jake communicated from his, uh, his frequently asked questions document, which is posted on OTAN, the PowerPoints, which he's shared. And also there's a document I want to aim you at. It's called Distance Learning Overview, March 2020. This has a very, uh, it's just got a few screenshots with a few overviews. It was the beginnings of what this presentation turned into. Now, as a caveat, this is not a beginner presentation. This is not TE basics. So in order to cover everything in one hour instead of two and a half, I'm gonna sort of fly through and uh, with the understanding that that's uh, kind of where I'm coming from as a caveat. Now, let me just ask you if there's any beginners in the audience who have never seen Tops Pro Enterprise, who this is brand new. If you want, you can put in the chat box new or please connect me for a TE basics webinar and we will do that, okay? Just getting started. So next slide, please. Now, when Jay covered the basics of all the different policies, we, we were kind of presented with a surprise, which is COVID-19. And we've all been taking a crash course in distance learning. All kinds of new vocabulary, like clock time versus learner mastery and blended versus hybrid. So through this presentation, I'm gonna to touch on some of the vocabulary. And Hopefully we'll all come away from it just a little bit smarter than when we started. So if you, next slide, please. And I see in the chat box, if you mention you're new to TE, be sure to include your email if you would like. Thank you. The NRS rules for distance learning. It's actually really simple. There's only one rule and that's called the 50% rule. We're also gonna talk a little bit about the different kinds of attendance models. Next slide, please. So here's the one rule. If more than 50% of the class instruction time is in distance learning, you need to mark in the class distance learning. Just a little checkbox. And if the opposite is true, if the class is less than 50%, equal or 50% or less, which we sometimes call blended or hybrid classes, you don't mark it. Pretty straightforward, right? Next slide, please. Now, even though brick and mortar classrooms are not being used, we still have the NRS rules for collecting demographics, barriers, and outcomes, okay? But you are not required to mark certain things, which are a level of detail that's considered too great. For example, the hours, like if your teacher is now remotely teaching their, the classes, you don't have to mark that it's between eight and 10 in the morning. And likewise, the percentage of hours that your students are spending doing distance learning doesn't need to be marked either. It doesn't, it's 35%, 38%, right? You don't have to go down that far. But we do have a new interface, which allows us to mark 
traditional instructional hours, as well as distance learning hours. And that I'm definitely going to show you. That's my favorite slide number 40. So if you need to quick go grab a drink of water or something, be sure to come back before that slide. Also, marking classroom plus distance learning under the instructional settings. That's an old field that's not currently used by TE, but it may be something that would be helpful for your agency in terms of keeping track of the fact that the classes may have shifted from where they were back in August or even back in January, that what was once a 100% classroom, it may be now classroom plus distance learning. Next slide, please. So to summarize, make sure that your data has the 50% rule marked sometime between now and June 30th when the data is, is due, due for the end of the year. And however, all distance learning activity, all of it, the level of detail, that part is not required. So the game right now is to get the attendance entered and then get your Q3 data reports prepared, right? And then we'll talk about the rest of it. So next slide, please. And I see some of the questions in the chat, and yes, I'm going to cover that about year-long classes versus short ones. I'm going to use Jay's phrase because I love it, pick up where you left off. And that pretty much signifies what I would say a large percentage of our schools are doing. That is, we used to have a Monday, Wednesday class, and the teacher met from 10 to 12 with the students, and now the teacher suddenly has got a Zoom account and a laptop, and the students are connecting in a different way. But it's still picking up where you left off signifies that we have a class where the delivery has changed. Starting new classes specific to distance learning is a little bit of a different beast. That's when the class has drastically reduced its objectives. It's reduced um, the student enrollment significantly. There's new material. Maybe you combined classes so that you had three instructors previously and now you're down to just one. Okay, so those are times where you would use part B. Next slide, please. Here's a question. When you look at your classes at your agency level, there's a lot of different ways. I mean, when I look around in the California server back at CASAS and I look at agencies, sometimes you set up your classes using a full year, like a lab starts in August, goes all the way through to June. Other schools use more of a semester based approach. And there's no right or wrong answer to that. It's just the way that you've configured your data and the way that you configured your classes. Sometimes it has to do with the way your student information system is structured. Um, I'm not going to get into too much of that, but there are times where you'll, when I worked for Plaster School for Adults, we had a combination of these three. So we had like the medical training, which went all year long. We had semester level high school diploma classes. And then we had little 12 week classes, which we broke off, which were for CTE. So that led us to using extended ID, which is a whole different uh, description. But let's kind of go through and think about this for a moment. I'm standing here and I've got my arms out. You've got the whole year at a glance and the event happened mid-March. So at that point, we only really have like 15 weeks to go in the year. And if we ask ourselves the question about is there 50% of the class, if you've structured your classes so that they're a full year, the answer is no because you're going along just as you have, right? The picking up where you left off and just the last 15 weeks or so are going to be distance learning. So for those classes, you're not gonna mark it. For, for the 12 week classes, it's easy as well because those are little tiny short things that are starting in right now, you know, around April 1st. And those will be definitely distance learning because that's all we can do right now, right? The semester classes are a little tougher and you might have to calculate. And next slide, please. pick up where you left off. Exactly, this is what we were saying. So if greater than 50% of the attendance will be distance learning, mark the class instance with distance learning. And here's, I put a little link here to www.weeksuntil.com. And I found that and it was like, wow, this is great. You go, it brings up a little calendar and you type in the first day of your class and then the last day of your class and you hit calculate and it goes, oh, 14 weeks and five days. So you don't have to sit there with a, cal a calendar and a calculator. Next slide, please. One of the questions I got in as when I was doing the Q and A box was, well, well, when do we know? When are we going back? When will we return to our brick and mortar schools? If I had 
a million, it's the million dollar question really, and that's my uh, crystal ball. The answer is start inputting your attendance into distance learning now. You can wait, procrastinators, here's your one chance to be a procrastinator and it's not gonna bite you initially. You can do the calculation at the end of the closures. However, at least from what my newspaper said this morning, it's looking pretty, pretty grim about getting back into uh, live teaching, but we'll see. I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed. Can I, uh, next slide please, Heather? All right, this is directly pilfered out of Jay's presentation. This is example number one. So let me read it to you. We have an ESL class, starts 8-1, goes through the end of May, regular classroom up through the event, but we switched to distance learning on March 23rd. So the question is, how do we mark it? So the two questions are, well, how long is the class run? That's a full year. And is it greater than 50%? No, so definitely we do not need to mark distance learning. That's pretty easy. So let's go to the next slide. Here's our first peek at Tops Pro Enterprise. My goodness, I don't know if you can see this. That's why we put the screenshots in. The class instance is what I did. Let me start at the top, I'm, I'm waving my hands. I started with a little test agency, 9998. Uh, when we were working with classmates a few months ago. So I created some classes. I have a basic skills ABE class, which starts with a 7,000. I have a few ESL classes, which start with 8,000. And then I created some IELCE um, Google Suite in Spanish classes, which start with a nine. Immediately I discovered that the only way to really be comfortable in this environment is to add the distance learning variables in the columns, which are bright yellow, which is like special programs, collect distance learning attendance, distance learning attendance duration, right? And so you can use your TE data manager knowledge. Let's go ahead and use that right click, add those columns, and then save a schema, create a new schema. You can see the little mouse over there. You go up at the top, you do more, edit schema, give it a name like distance learning, and you save it. So that every time you go into a class instance, it's gonna look like that now. That's your hint number one. Take that one. Um, okay, next slide, please. So to, edit the, uh, to illustrate the question, we had that ESL class. Um, so here we're looking at a class instance information. We have a class that's a all year long. It starts on August 1st. That's the, hello, the yellow highlight and it ends in March. And you see a little circular box around distance learning under special programs. And we did not check that box because it's less than 50%, exactly. Next slide, please. All right, and here's the, that other one I mentioned that if you want to check it, that now it's become a classroom plus distance learning, that's an option. Next slide. All right, here's another example. Here's our ABE class, the 7,000 class. Here's an ABE class beginning on March 1st, and it runs through May. This class was held in a regular classroom only for the first two weeks, and then switched to distance learning on 323. Hmm. How do we mark this one? Right. We did our calculation with, with our little weeks until. We realized it's 12 weeks, so we're gonna mark distance learning because more than 50% of the instruction will be delivered outside of the regular classroom. All right, next slide, please. Is this making sense so far? Okay. So here it is with the checkbox right where it belongs. Next slide, please. And so remember, oh, back up one, please, Netta. Because the class had the first two weeks of classroom and then switched to distance learning, we're going to use classroom plus distance learning. Okay, next slide. And it, I'm going to just take a deep breath and let you kind of read through this. A lot of words on this slide, I apologize. Now, this is the other option. If you're going to start a new class specific to distance learning, because, like I said, there's a significant change, dates, times, roster, instructor, what you may want to do is to take the existing classes in TE, shorten them, and then create a new one and mark that as distance learning. 
Okay, let's go on to the next slide. You'll, it'll start to make more sense. With an example, an ESL class begins scheduled to run through the end. The last day of the regular class, we'll switch it up from, from May to move it to the 13th. And then we'll do a brand new class on 323. Next slide, please. That's the one. That's how we're going to do it. We're going to change the date and create a second class. Next slide. Can you go back one, please? There we are. So we changed the class. We took the long class that was the year-long class and we shortened it to end in March. That's bullet point number one. And then we hit save. Uh, next slide now, please. And then what we did is we estimated the reduced number of hours. Sometimes agencies keep track of this, but it's important if you shorten a class, it's important to, to subtract it out. So the new class we're going to create is shorter. It's only 48 hours, and this one is uh, 132 instead of 180. All right, next, please. All right, here's where the black belt of TE concerns. What we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the class definition. Next slide. And here's my hint to you. Um, we're going to give the new class ID bullet point number two. If it's going to be 100% distance learning, it makes sense to put the DL in the class name, just to make it easier for yourself when you're searching around. Next slide, please. Janice. And now we're gonna duplicate. Yeah. Janice, I'm sorry, this is Anthony from OTAN. So we've gotten a couple requests um, to maybe slow down just a little bit. I think people need a little bit of time to process what you're saying and then also look at the screen as well. Thanks. Okay, fair enough. The process of duplicating, let me just kind of stand back for one second. I know I'm going fast through this. And again, this is part of being a, um, having a bunch of years as a data manager that you know that when you go to create a new class, and this is part of the, of the presentation, I was really debating whether I should even go over it because it is kind of a brutal thing. You duplicate the, du the, the class definition first, and then you duplicate the class instance. This is all included in the slides. And if you follow through, I really, I do believe that it will make sense. Also, technical support is complete, cost of tech support is completely well-versed in how to do this. So if you finish this presentation, you go off, you go on to the Rolling Hills simulation server, you try it once or twice and it doesn't make sense, please call tech support. They're not as busy as they usually are. Oscar, Jesse, Martha, thank you guys are probably all on here helping me out today. Um, Trust me, this, this will go, it'll get easier as we go on. This is the hardest part of the presentation. If you can get through this, you've got it made. Next slide, please. So if we created this tiny class instance that starts in March and ends in May, we, when we marked special programs equal to distance learning, and we saved it. Next slide. Of course, it's distance learning only, so we're going to mark that box too. Next slide. So now, if you squint and look, you can see that we've taken 8001 and we've shortened it, and 8101 is just for distance learning and it's just for March through May. And that new column, special programs, that you included shows that it's a distance learning box has been checked. Okay, next slide. So to summarize, it's important to leave the current classes as is if all you're going to do is change the delivery method. If you choose to shorten the class, then you need to make the adjustments here on this slide. And all classes need to be evaluated using the 50% rule if 50% of the attendance hours for that class will be distance learning or not. All right, on to the next. This is attendance. This is the part I like the best because we're talking about instructional hours and distance learning hours. Next slide. This is straight out of Jay's presentation, the different ways that we can talk about distance learning. Clock time is two hours on Monday, two hours on Wednesday. Teacher verification is different. That's assigning different kinds of projects and assigning numbers of hours for each assignment. 
Learner mastery is more of a bulk sort of a thing where you have credits based on completing content of lessons. Next slide, please. I'm not going to get into this. It's already covered in Jay's presentation. This is what I want to pay attention to. This is when you go into TE and you can set two features that show whether it's learning in the classroom, in a regular classroom, or distance learning. And what you go into the class instance, and you're going to edit something called intensity. So there's a DL interface setting, which is a toggle yes or no, and it allows the uh, attendance screens to change so that you can mark distance learning right alongside of any kind of instructional hours. So really good one is number two. If you're using a daily method for counting your uh, attendance, you can set the distance learning duration in minutes and it will preload the attendance input screen. Next slide, please. So let's take 8101 again and set it up for easier data entry. Next slide. So here's the two buttons. If you open up the ESL Advanced 8101 class instance and you scroll down to intensity and you click on that to edit it, what we're going to do is we're going to change collect distance learning attendance from NA or no to yes. Okay, and then what we're going to do, because this particular class is 100% distance learning, the total class duration in minutes up in the top right corner is 120. So we're going to preload with 120 minutes for this class into the attendance input screen. Next slide, please. All right, so now if we're in there, we click on attendance. Next slide. There it is, slide 40, my favorite. This shows instructional attendance and distance learning attendance alongside of each other, one right above the other. This is for our Tuesday, Thursday class. You can see the little checkbox underneath Tuesday, checkbox under Thursday. Now we're doing daily attendance. You see the little red arrow pointing at daily attendance. And when you click on fill, which are where the two little red arrows are towards the bottom, it pre-fills the 120 distance learning minutes into the student records for student test one and student two. Okay, next slide, please. Now, if you're using cumulated update, I can already see the word cumulative in the question and answer box. The answer is yes. You can also do distance learning minutes in using cumulated or update method. Just the difference is we don't preload the minutes into those fields because it's a kind of a keeping a running count value rather than a summation of minutes. You know, it's like two plus two plus two is six, right? Um, that's how this is implemented. Then the third way to get attendance into Top Pro Enterprise. Next slide, please. Anybody know what this, this, uh, what this is, what we're looking at? Two points, if you can type it in the chat box. What are we looking at? Yes, it's a CSV file, third-party import. Could be from any uh, vendor, actually. Which file is it? Yes, there's Jose, Tichelle, you guys all got it. This is the ATT file, which is imported. Actually, I did a quick test using a third-party vendor software last Friday, and it works just fine. You can yank the data out of there that's been marked for distance learning, and it creates this little file. Works for cumulated, works for um, daily. And so that should save you all a little bit of time and trouble um, going forward. Next slide, please. All right, we're making really good progress. My thought was if we can get through most of the slides and we have a little bit of time left over, we can actually bring up Tops Pro Enterprise and we can walk through it. Um, Jay, are there any pressing questions in the chat box that you want me to kind of slow down a little bit and? an address or shall we turn I don't or? think so I mean you're asking I'll just say the one that keeps coming up is uh, calculating the 50% rule the calculating the 50% rule is not anything that's really done automatically it is something that you necessarily <clears throat> need to calculate I'll just say though that that's the answer to about half the questions I'm getting is do I have to do it this way or that way 
the answer, you know, inevitably is it, well, it depends on whether it's more than 50% or less than 50%. If it ends up more, then you need to mark those distance learning uh, extra fields. If you, if it's less than 50%, you don't. So I just bring that up because that's been about half the questions is usually just, it's been some variation on that 50% rule. Thank That's you. It. Thanks. Sure. And then the two questions I see open. Um, yeah, actually, the test that I did was with an ASAP uh, database exporting and importing. So, yes, as far as that synchronization between uh, exports from that database into Top Store Enterprise, um, I would suggest if you want to talk to uh, ASAP technical support and get the additional details, yes. And the field, we understand, Sarah, yes. That, that's part of the camaraderie of data among data managers. Students in distance learning. This is a special case. Our developers realize that there are times where you may have a class that's not necessarily distance learning, but you have a student in the way that they're engaged in learning that is now very much distance learning. It could be someone who's suddenly unable to go to class physically, but the teacher has made adjustments for them to do it outside the classroom. That's more the proxy hours with the learner mastery model. It could also be a student who joined a year-long lab. Next slide, please. Oh, there we are. A student that joined a year-long class that has recently switched to distance learning. So this, let me see if I have the next example. One time. Uh, yeah, next slide, please. So this student, if you look at this class, here's a class 8001. And it's been going all year long from August 1st, that's the first red arrow, to May 31st, right? But we have a, a student that joined it back just recently on March 1st. That's the date that they entered the class. So this student, because of COVID-19 and now that everything, for, as far as this class is concerned, is going to go distance learning, we can mark the individual student record as being distance learning as compared to his peers. Uh, next slide, please. So here we go. So you can go record students' records, or you can go record students' program years, but the game is to find the student. You can go either way. And then when you edit the student record, you scroll down to the status, the status up there in the top right corner, right under the new button, and then you set distance learning checkbox under for special program entries. That's it, and save it. Next slide, please. Oh, here's another one, hint number two. For your student records also, you should create a schema that includes that additional column of special program entries. And then go ahead, so you click on more, edit schema, give it a name, and save it. And that way, every time you come back to student records, it will come up this way. You might have to squish them. Uh, I'm moving my hands. It might have to squish them together a little bit to make them all fit, but you can narrow the columns. You know how to do that. Okay, let's see. Next slide, please. Reports with distance learning. Anybody try the new reports? We added this in the new release called Build 75 just a couple of weeks ago. What we did is we added uh, this button here under special options so that you can run the reports for these one, two, three, four, five reports using instructional hours or distance learning hours or combined. So if you were to bring up the report setup, and now I'm looking over in the top left corner, the report setup navigator, general settings. That's how you get here. You scroll down and click that button. So if you go off and generate it, you can see what kinds of output you get. Uh, next slide, please. Now, this is another new report that I am very, very excited about. This shows total student hours versus the ones that are imported using like a daily method or accumulated. And then it also has a set of columns over on the far right where it says hours that are uncounted. And this is data manager hat put on here. Hint number three, while you're sitting at home and you're getting your data ready for Q3, I suggest don't wait to the last minute. Go ahead and run this on chunks of your data. You can run it against a, a sequence of classes. You can run it on all your ESL classes, or you can run it site by site, however you want to do it. But this is how you verify that your attendance is clean, especially if it's coming over for third-party third import. You know, sometimes we have a substitute that's doing the data entry, and they don't click the, the daily button, and it comes accumulated. And Top Shore Enterprise, when it's going to 
at the end of the year calculating the values for the different classes and the, the instructional hours, it, it needs to keep everything in the same column. So um, that's my third hint to you for that. And the, oh, your question, how do you run this report? It's under, if we go into T, I'm going to do that in a minute. I think I've got enough time. We can probably go into T. It's under, um, under the reports menu, under demographics. It's called total student hours. All right. Next slide, please. <laughs> well, uh, I have to say thank you to Oscar because originally I didn't have bullet point number one up there. I said, oh, go off and edit a class and change it around. And Oscar said, you know, Janice, technical support would probably recommend they use the Rolling Hills Adult School to try that first. So thank you, Oscar, for pointing that out. Here's the link down at the bottom so that you can see where to go. And the homework assignment is to grab a class instance, set the flags to configure distance learning attendance. Go ahead and look at slide 38 if you don't remember how to do that. Then input some distance learning minutes and then run a report. One of the DNL um, distance learning enable reports from uh, the set of five there. You can mess with the date ranges. You could turn off DNL minutes um, on and off and see how that works. Okay. Now, what we can do is summarize a little bit. Kind of let the next slide, please. So we've talked about adjusting your classes for the change that happened here in March. I've given you a few of my favorite tips for doing speeding, speedy data entry using the new DL interface setting. We have resources for you to look at. We have CASAS online training at training.casas.org. And then I guess my chance for you now to ask if you have any suggestions for other types of training like if you're interested in TE Basics webinars, or if you want to talk about um, ways to get data managers to get their data ready for the Q3 submission. Um, Jay is presenting about the Employment and Earnings Survey. He's got um, NRS DIR presentations coming up, and you can always sign up for those on, uh, for at least my California agency, caadultedtraining.org. Let's see, we've got a few minutes. Shall we take a look at Top Pro Enterprise? I could do that. Should I share my screen, Netta? Yeah, go for it, Janice. I've, um, I've uh, taken down the PowerPoint, so you can go ahead and share screen. All right. All right. Let me just kind of rearrange things a little bit so I can see that Q&A box is really large, so I'm going to minimize it. I apologize. I won't be able to see your questions, but I can't do both at the same time. All right. So here we are in the classmate demo. That's my little test database. It doesn't have a lot of students. It's way smaller than what you guys deal with on a day to day basis. But for demonstrations, here is what we do. So we can go in and look at these different. Uh, here's my ABE class. Let's look at how that was set up. When you want to edit it, you click on the little button icon here. And let's say that this is the class that went from March until May. So now it's going to be more like distance learning. So we're going to check that box. And it's classroom plus distance learning. And then we're going to scroll down some more and we're going to click on intensity. And we've got the distance learning minutes there is 120. And we're going to set this to, yeah. And up at the top, we're going to save it. Are you with me so far? So that's for the ABE class. We're going to let that save. So now, if I want to do attendance, click on the little pencil. Ah, darn it. This is one of my classes I don't have any students in. My bad. Hang on. This is what happens when I go off script. Uh, let's grab a different one. It's got some classes, students in it. So we can always check class enrollments to see who's in there. Here's some students. Okay. So let's take a look at this one. So this is a year-long class, so it's not distance learning, 
but we do want to mark that and we have yes set for the interface. So now when we do attendance, you'll see the screen from slide number 40 that we were talking about. And there it is. So it, that's this little Monday and Wednesday class, and we have two students in the class. So you can just type, click on fill, and it puts the 120 in. I'm going to click on fill here, and it puts in the 120, and you can save it. Oh, and save isn't at the time. That's over here. Okay. So we can run reports, as I mentioned, instructional hours. And we can go down in the general settings. We can look if we want to show instructional, distance learning only, or combined. I see your hand up, but I'm not going to stop. I'm sorry. One sec. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Let's run it at the agency level because it's such a small school. Okay. So we have our students, and then. Under daily, we show the distance learning only hours for each of the students with a total. Okay, that's how that works. Now, there was one place where we were looking at a class, their class instances. I'm trying to remember which one it was. I think it was ESL Intermediate. And who was enrolled? This is the one where we had a student that didn't. Oh, here we go. Let's squish this together a little bit better. We had a student that was enrolled in March for a year-long class. So let's say we want to mark this student as being a special distance learning only student, right? So we can either do record student records and bring up student test score, that works, or we can just double click on the student. Get into it this way. Uh, I already checked it as part of when I was doing the screenshots for this, but you go down to status and you check distance learning right here. So that marks this particular student for distance learning, even though they're in a class where predominantly the rest of the people aren't. I had another one I wanted to show you. Actually, I went into, um, you can actually do bulk edit. I didn't include this in the PowerPoint because I was kind of running out of time, but you can select a group of classes. Let's say mm, this DL class, I'm going to hold down the control key and this DL class, and you can do a I'm batch edit, not bulk edit, batch edit. And you can go ahead and make a change to it. Like if both of these were going to make sure that there's special program equal to distance learning, and you can go up here at the top and save it. Now, this is one of those ones where you have to have a secondary ID, the credentials, the second login and password. If you're on our house, that's easy to do. There's all the different logins of administrator 00 through, I think it's 50. But this, this machine, I only have my one. So we're going to cancel out of that. Do you want to say changes? No. And likewise, you, could, you can batch it at classes and, and make that change if you want to change the intensity or the, um, to set the flag for collecting, this is the flag, that yes, no one, collect distance learning attendance. Now you can't, uh, do, I'm not gonna go on a limb and say this, but I don't, I didn't find a way initially that you could batch edit a whole bunch of student records to change um, their special program settings. So um, we're just gonna skip that one for now because I couldn't find a great way to do it. Um, Okay, now I'll flip over and look at the at the chat. Is there anything else, Jay, that people are begging to see that I haven't tried yet? I'll just do something again slower. Sorry, I had to unmute. I was buried in Q and A here. I uh, know oh, I mean, there's no real theme. There are like people have kind of. I think it took people 20 or 30 minutes to kind of get savvy to Q and A, but now everybody has. So now everybody's digging in. Ah, I see. That it's definitely a different interface for those of us who are really comfortable with Zoom meeting, adding a second place for the presenters as well as the attendees to read becomes kind of problematic. 
I know in the answered box when we were doing it last time that you had to view all or collapse all that you couldn't actually see the answers as they were happening, which is kind of crazy. So let me see. I'm just going to scroll around and pick. Collecting attendance, semester long classes, year long. Understanding. Erica, you, you nailed it. So if you have a class that's here, okay, let's put this out to the group. We have a class that starts, it goes year round. It begins in July and ends in June. 50% uh, of the class has been of the classes instructional hours. So we don't need to change the class to DL unless it exceeds the 50%, right? Right. So now from here on out, the hours are gonna be logged as distance learning, right? Because that's a teacher doing pretty much the same thing they've always done, whether it's you know live over Zoom, or even some agencies are considering live Zoom recorded and watched later, although that's a little bit more problematic for taking attendance. But definitely by converting it from live in a brick and mortar to live over a, um, a webinar type environment, that is a simple change of just logging the distance learning hours in the other column. And if a student starts a class that's a year long class late in February, then that student needs to be marked as distance learning as in the student record as special programs. Anything else? I think I think we've pretty much covered it. Let me, um, Netta, can we go back to the slides if I stop sharing? Yes. Okay. Let me share slides. Thank you. What slide number would you like to go to? We're at the end. This is pretty much it. I think I want to say thank you so much to OTAN for setting this up and for being the technology expert. We definitely rely on you, especially in this new time of learning and understanding with distance learning. And big thank you to Jay for managing that chat box. The PowerPoint is already posted. The, the Q&A from the chat will be converted into a document that's readable and we'll insert all the answers to that in there and then post that as well. So I think that's pretty much it for now. If you have anything else and you want to enter it or put it in the Q&A, we will dig around and come up with answers for you just as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. This is Anthony from OTAN. Um, thanks everyone for coming. Before you leave, um, a couple of things. We would like you to complete an evaluation um, on today's session. So the uh, link for the evaluation is evaluation.otan.us. Um, I maybe Marjorie, if you can join in here. Um, we're I think the evaluation will come up once we close the Zoom room, but in case it doesn't, um, go ahead and just type in to your browser evaluation.otan.us. Um, go ahead and fill out the evaluation form for today's CASA session. Um, also, as you're leaving the room again, for attendance purposes, first name, last name, and the name of your agency spelled out, please, no abbreviations, um, so that we can mark attendance properly. And then finally, um, please visit the OTAN website, otan.us, uh, for information about upcoming webinars. We're actually nearing the end of this week. We already have a full schedule of webinars uh, for next week. We'll go ahead and publish that schedule on the OTAN uh, website, OTAN.us. And then also we, um, if people aren't aware, we also will blast that out to the adult education field in California. Um, so make sure you're a member on the OTAN website, OTAN.us, and then look up in the upper right hand corner to become a member. Membership is free and open, and we use it primarily to communicate with the adult education field. So please go ahead and make sure you're a member on the OTAN website as well. 
Um, the slides are available at the OTAN website. You go to OTAN.us, and then in the upper right corner, click on the COVID-19 uh, field support button, and you can download the handout from today. Um, we also are uh, including recordings and handouts from previous webinars there. So if there's something of interest, please go ahead and download those or watch the recording as it becomes available. Um, again, first name, last name, agency name before you leave, and then evaluation.otan.us to complete a, an evaluation for today's presentation. Uh, Janice, Jay, anything else you want to conclude I'll just with add, I mean, uh, I'll just reiter reiterate, uh, it does sort of seem like that Q&A caught on late. The first 20 minutes, there were very few questions. The last 20 minutes, it was barraged. I don't think it really had much to do with where we were in the presentation. It seems more like people caught on to the Q&A and once they did, it, it, it exploded. So we'll post them on, we'll work on them tomorrow, maybe post tomorrow, it may be Monday by the time it's posted. I'm not sure about that, but we'll be working on those questions. Uh, there may be a few of you you get back to. I was talking to about 20 or 25 of you at once. So some of you kind of fired answers and it was kind of hard to follow the responses in some cases because it was just t juggling with too many people at once. So looking at them here after the training might, you know, be a little better, hard to say. Thanks, Jay. Um, Netta and Jay, um, can you remind me about upcoming um, CASAS webinars? Uh, I think we have one, uh, a couple next yeah, week, Yeah, right? I'll say, uh, for, well, for, this series, you guys are doing one next Tuesday at one. We've got a repeat of that overview session I'd done a couple times already, Thursday at one. And then uh, on Tuesday morning, the seventh, we have a couple of those that Janice was referencing on uh, the survey and on the NRSDIR. We'll be adding more. What I'll say is if, uh, you know, we may add more in the SOTAN series. We'll probably be adding more on CASAS. If there's specific things you want, you know, feel free to send us an email with some suggestions. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, we've got plenty of time to do these online things here the next few weeks. So if there are things that you think would help, you know, we are all ears in terms of suggestions. And then I just shared my screen, which will have the training calendar. So the adult ed training calendar and you have considerations when implementing distance learning. So that's um, kind of a repeat of uh, the last two with Jay on the 9th of April. And then of course, if you change the sponsor to CASAS and search, you'll get the um, information on the other webinars that CASAS is hosting as well. Does that Fantastic. answer your question? So again, Matt? yeah, OTAN will Yes, thank you, Netta. And again, um, OTAN is going to go ahead and put uh, uh, create the uh, schedule for upcoming webinars next week that we are sponsoring, um, and we'll send that out to the field. We'll also post that on the OTAN website, OTAN.us.